Faisal, in our last conversation, you mentioned NOR and the foundation, and uh, I hadn't heard about it before, so I'd, I'd love for you to talk about that. Okay, yeah, thanks, Yali. Uh, this is a huge subject. I'd like to make it like maybe two videos, elaborate on um, the, this, this title, Noor. Noor is an, an, an Arabic word, and it means uh, the original light. Like the light that comes from the moon is reflection. It's the sun sheds light on the moon and it reflects it on us. So that is not uh, Noor, that is Ziyah in Arabic. So Noor is that the light that comes from source and it's often referred to as the light of enlightenment, God's light, divine light, um, uh, yeah, the enlightened, pure awareness, luminosity, Noor. Uh, the, the word Noor that I used for a long time to, to name the foundation that we have, Noor Foundation, you know, that now I am also thinking of changing the Diamond Logos Academy to uh, Noor Academy, and the Diamond Logos will be the Diamond Logos teaching that's a branch from, uh, of the uh, Noor Academy. Uh, this word, I, I translated it in English in a very specific way. It's N dot O dot O dot R dot. If you read it, it's Noor, but it is abbreviation for natural order of reality. For a long time, since I started this journey and you know, personal growth, then the unfoldment of the diamond approach with Almas, then the continuation of the, uh, the diamond logos unfoldment, um, there was always a quest in my heart, which was not, not to come with the new teachings. If, 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 if the new teachings comes, beautiful. It's not to come with a new system. It's not to upgrade one system or another. All of those are beautiful, you know? And utilizing the new knowledges that come in psychology and spirituality and science, all of that is, is really beautiful. But I didn't want to accumulate knowledge and wisdom and new uh, approaches and weave them and come with a new approach or a different approach. That to me felt not sufficient, not enough. There was something in my heart wanted more than that. Something in me deep inside knew there is an order of things. I didn't even know what it was. You know, that, uh, that our deepest healing, our deepest awakening, our deepest uh, uh, accumulation of knowledge is to reach this natural order. Is there a natural order of things? But I couldn't think of it. I was in the roller coaster of the essential unfoldment, the psychological unfoldment, one quality after another, one issues after another, one development after another. And I'm grateful for whoever you know, contributed. Uh, Almas or Karen or um, new age psychology, therapist, client, friends. I, I learned a lot from so many, and I am full of gratitude for all what I've learned. And it was unfolding a grand vision, you know, and I was like a kid in the neighborhood. I couldn't see, you know, I was just, I couldn't even know how to swim yet. And by years, 40 years now, almost 50 years of this unfoldment, the vision a few years ago started to really settle in, in a much grander way than I thought. That in my heart, in my soul, it wasn't about coming with something in you. It was about um, restoring the natural order of things. I don't want to have a human being develop wings and fly. I want to just know what a human being is before it flies. You know? I felt like we were touching on the elephant in the dark, you know, and each one describing one piece, you know, one says it's like a fan, one person says it's a trunk, and we, you know, uh, and I wasn't 
satisfied, I wasn't fulfilled, even by recognizing my enlightened nature, 76, or the essential domains, one quality after another, you know, and the, I needed something to land me in a way that my heart and soul rest. And I remember years and years ago, I, you know, I used to go to Hawaii to teach and visit. And I kept hearing this Hawaiian saying, they say, uh, you know, like to make the right, right. And I loved it. You know, I was being a therapist and a seeker. I wanted to do, to make the wrong, right. Fix the ailments and the diseases and lostness and confusions and all the offness that we have, make them right, you know, which is wonderful. You know, for all, um, as I said, grateful for all the, you know, new age psychology, ancient psychology, spirituality has been really helping us, you know, seeing our offness and finding the correction for it through so many theories and with the essential unfoldment and with this spiritual depth, we saw that we were getting closer, or at least I was getting closer to what makes the right, right. Mm. You know, it's not a new theory. It's not a new, you know, um, sometimes you can transmit the right to somebody who has no capacity of any mental uh, sophistication. They, they won't, they don't know. Uh, object relation theory or ego psychology, you know, you, you go to a child, you know, and you, you can spiritualize this child and you can restore the child who is in trauma or um, suffering from deep, deep ailments, you know, neglected parenthood, drugged parenthood, all of those things. And you can stay with that child and you can transmit the being to that child and you can awaken the being in that child, and that child, that baby, will be restored to brightness again. Mm. It doesn't need to explain to mom that, you know, it's narcissist and dad is abusive. I mean, not, they don't need this. You know, and I've seen it in like about you know, 35 years ago, I worked on a baby who was literally dying, who was so covered with, with negative states of essence. She was three years old, you know, and, three months old, negative was substance and she was dying. Her mother was, her mother and father were alcoholics and drug addicts and negative states of being. And they asked me to be with her and I stayed with her and did some healing and Hamid was there too, we worked on it. And it took about three hours to see one layer of negativity after another lifting off. She was gray in color, she was dark in colors, you know because it was filled with negative state of essence, Ed, iron, false pearl, yucky stuff. She in was- the, That happened in vitro, you're saying. In, in vitro, mm -hmm. yeah. From, from the womb time and the first two or three months continually merging with a mother who was so bent out, no, no essence. And I, I remember three hours and I could see and sense one left, one layer lifted off after another. That's about 40 years ago. One layer lifting off. Oh, may I off. ask, what, what, what is it you did to work on her? Sorry? What, what, is it, what is it you did to work on her? I, I just held her, be with her, and sensed her, you know? And sensed that this, I feel some thickness, some heaviness, you know? Some, something bad. Then I stay with the thickness, and my being was so, uh, I was at that time very, very much into my, Power into my spiritual power, like a powerhouse. A powerhouse. I was riding my spiritual Maserati, you know, <laughs> really in my stupa. You know, for those who know essence, I was in my stupa in my point of life in the absolute. But I didn't know. I knew, but I didn't know what I knew. You know, it took years to know. I was it. I was the teachings itself. I was the embodiment itself. I didn't have the On when we did the diamond approach and the analysis, we started doing that. But this was before that. That was, I think, in 77 or something like that. 
just being with her and sensing this thick layer or that thick layer and staying with it and my being begin to produce the antidote, the frequency, light or golden essence or strength or vitality or um, clarity or spaciousness. And I was wa watching a miracle happening. This baby that's dying transformed and became glowing into life. And she was adopted by her aunt. She took her out of that house and she adopted her and she's now fine. She's done. So something happened. Something made the right right without interjecting any theory about merging and negative merging and identification and also, uh, you know, all of this knowledge. And that. Something that makes the right right. What makes the right right is restoring us to our rightness. I'll mention another one, which is really very, very nice. I saw a brother shaman, you know, his name is Arkan, A-R-K-A-N. He just had the new videos recently, and he was talking about, um, you know, about partially about what's happening with the uh, coronavirus and how the earth has to stop us and lock us in our houses in order for the earth to heal. And the earth is healing, it's becoming a rainbow body now. And I, you know, we need to stay in our homes a little bit longer till the earth, you know, as a scientist friend told me, has healed over 25% in two, three months. This is miraculous. You know, it's, it's really a miraculous. Uh, th this shaman brother saying, um, he, he said that many ask him, what shall we do now? You know? And he said, the question is not what shall we do now? This is question number two. Question number one is what shall we be now? How shall we be now? Then he gives the example that the spider doesn't know about engineering and architecture and design and you know, all of those things. She just goes and makes this magnificent cover. Magnificent, right? She doesn't need any, any of all the knowledges and PhDs that we need to, to have in order to know this. It's okay to have this knowledge, but she knows it and does it because she is a spider and that a tiger or a cat can climb a tree. It doesn't need any training. It just slowly learns it and does it because it's a cat. The dilemma with us is that we cannot do what, what we need to do because we are not humans. We are semi-humans. We are maybe 75% ego, personality, conditioning, confusions, you know, and we are not who we are. A human being is an essential being that lives in this grand vehicle, this body, this magnificent body. And if we are who we are, then we make the right right. From this rightness comes right action. If I am my being, and if I am incorporating my essential states, then the product of that is right action, right thinking, right evolution. And since the human being is empowered by so many capacities, a magnificent mind, a spirit, all of those things, our capacity surpasses the animal realm, the plant realm. So we are like the guardian of this realm, of the universe. In fact, we are the creators of this realm. We created it but we forgot how we created it. We, cre we forgot that we are the creators and we forgot the natural order of it. Yeah. So my work was so much not to get lost or get competitive in this knowledge or that knowledge. And I'm grateful for those who brought object relation theory or ego psychology. Or, I mean, I'm so grateful this knowledge helped my mind and my psyche to understand my lostness but more than that was the guidance. The guidance that took me 
to the state, to the knowledge that, that was the, what makes the right right, what makes me more and more the human that I aspire to reach. And the, to, to reach, to become a human is, you know, is, is, is beyond any glory. I always joke about the humility of Christ, you know, how he says, you know, humbly, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the light, I am the way, I am the truth. He didn't leave anything, that he didn't own it, didn't claim it, and it is not narcissistic. He was teaching us, we are like children, he was teaching us to own who we are, to stand up to the glory of who we are, and to stand up to the responsibility of who we are. To be a creator is, is one of the lousiest jobs you can take. You know, to be God is not, is not what we think. You know, it's really <laughs> quite a challenge. It requires continual alignment and correctiveness and... Uh, evolution and we are in the process of evolution so uh Faisal some would say that's because he was the son of God sorry some would say that's because he was the son of God and when you say we are the creators and I and you I I remember a talk I, God it must have been 15 years ago at CIIS where you were saying essentially humans are supreme being, beings we are, we are the supreme beings and i remember somebody in the audience being completely outraged and just 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 couldn't deal with that as a as a concept it's a big it's a big statement it's a big statement a huge statement the dalai lama says it says it so often you know once once he came here to to, to the bay area uh, as invited by the Muslim community because there was the beginning of the lobbying against the Muslims and uh, right. all of those things. So some of the uh, Sufis here and some of the Muslims here and some of the Christians and some of the Jews, they were together to avoid creating fights and conflicts and all of those things, you know, that they, 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 they really wanted to create harmony between us. And they invited him, you know, to be the head of the, of the meeting, you know? I was there and he said, you know, the, the funny thing is that here are those Christians and Jews and Muslims, they all believe in God and in <laughs> I believe we are God. We are the one responsible. We create our karma. We create our destiny. We mobilize, but we don't know how do we do it? What is the knowledge of enlightenment? What is the knowledge of the universe? How does it function? How are we, you know, how can we go back to being right and making the right right and being humans? Then we know how to take care of the planet. Then we realize that it is our planet. You know, we take care, uh, of, of each other, am I not my brother keeper? You know, so before I I adapt a system or uh, something, you know, think that might do it. Let me restore me to my rightness, to being a human being. You know, I always remember that um, uh, one of the strange things that uh, we we talk about courage. We usually talk about courage as a daredevil, somebody who challenges reality and challenges situation and jump off the cliff and fly in. I don't know what all of those things, daring and doing, you know, like, and, and they think, oh, they are brave. They are cowards. They are so frozen inside. They are made of iron, of steel. The water in their system is crystallized. They don't dare feel fear. A human being feel fear. A human being shakes in their boots, they cry. Courage is to have the inner uh, warmth, inner humanness to care for each other.
somebody who is broken and lift them up. Not to go and break somebody brave because you want to be more brave than, than they are. This is false courage. And real courage, no, real courage is red essence, filling you with warmth, with strength, with vitality, with vitality. You become a builder instead of a destroyer. You build the planet, you build the humanity, you build the inner psyche and the mind. And you know, this is the, the, the Christ family in Arabic. They are called the family of Umran, which means the family of builders. So that's why when he comes, he will re-establish maybe the order of rebuilding the earth, rebuilding what, what's happening. This is courage. This is courage. And, and uh, you, you mentioned the story. Can, can you tell me the story about this guy you told me, you just told me about in, in South America, the little boy? Oh, um, the angel of Colombia. The angel of Colombia, yeah. At eight years old, he, he, he um, saw a woman in the street who didn't have food and he got her food and that led to him taking care of all of the aged people that he could find and feeding them and bathing them. Eight years old, he, he, he recruited all of his friends and you know, sort of made them angels. And, and I, I believe he's probably in his 20s now and he has a center in Colombia and uh, it's just, just so touching. <laughs> And instead of growing in all those suburbs and becoming thieves and becoming thugs and becoming, you know, brave and divine love activated in him. Yes. Divine love restored his heart to humanness, taking care of the elders. So to me that when I saw that the work, the guidance has shifted it from the dimensionality of where we were going and all of those things without negating it but opened it up that, 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 that really the work is about restoring humanity, restoring the natural order of reality. Then I felt, oh, now I can call it Noor. Noor, Noor Foundation, Noor Academy, Noor Teaching, because it utilizes all the teachings from, you name it, you know, different fields. It's all beautiful. But it is not about building another system and another system and all of that. It's more about activating and connecting us to what is right in us as a human being. And what is right about us is that we are an essential being, an essential soul that enters in this most magnificent of all vehicles. This is a human body, might last 80, 90 years, but such magnificent and done in a way that is, I mean, if you really think about how awesome it is, you, 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 you just bow on your knees, you know? I'll, I'll elaborate later on about the cosmic view and how it is done in a way that is really awesome in order for us to experience what we are experiencing. Uh, we were talking about, for example, uh, dogs, for example, right? Uh, you know, um, they they don't see colors. Right, color blind. Color blind. They see different shades. You know, I think cats maybe. I'm not so sure. They see different shades of gray. You know, they, or maybe dogs do that. You know? And we, as human beings, you know, if you if you look at your eyes, if you put a magnifier and look at the the cells of those eyes. They are like living diamonds. And those living diamonds can perceive frequencies that enables us to see colors, lights, dimensionality, forms. I mean, this is miraculous. Without this lens, the universe is nothing but emanations. We don't see it, just emanations. That's why when people, you know, get, reach the absolute, especially beginner absolutist, you know, it's, this is a dilemma. Beginner absolutists get intoxicated by the absolute, you know. They reach the absolute, and when you reach the absolute, there is nothing but a luminous field, you know. And they believe that there is nothing else. There is only, this is the only reality. This is the only supreme reality, you know. 
and it reaches in many of them some kind of distortions and mind warps and all of those things to negate this reality, to negate the immensity of knowledge, the immensity of wisdom, the immensity of how does form come together? How does feelings, senses, uh, sounds, uh, a, 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 a magical kingdom, right? It's the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And here is this little person sitting in his chair, experiencing the glory from the alpha to the omega. If I am only the absolute, there is none of this. This is all I could say, it's all an illusion. I had a dream, I had an illusion, I wake up and now there is nothing but luminous field. I wish I had a stick when I am around those guys. You know, really zen stick. Like, does it hurt? You know, <laughs> really like, there's a glory, there's a human spirit, a human soul who is magnificent, who is in this kingdom, who is created su such the limitation that it created enables us to see this magnificent infinite kingdom. Through limitation, we see the glory. It's, it's mind boggling, you know? Through limitation, because, we see the glory? Yeah, because like my eyes, the cells are limited, right? But because of this limitation, I can see colors and lights and forms and all of those things, okay. right? So I created a limited up enabled me to see uh, trees, sky, birds, king, and kingdom. You know? So by creating the human body and the soul and all of this, and by funneling the frequency of the universe, we created this Disney show, this magical show. To tell me this is an illusion and we are there and we are only that, it's like not making the right right. Is coming with a new theory, with a new understanding, because you don't love yourself, because you don't like yourself, you don't want to be to nobody. Okay, be the absolute. Mm -hmm. I love me. I love my narcissism. I love my ego offness. I love my point of light. I love, I love my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? How are you going to deal with that? <laughs> really, you know? My mother loved me. She was crazy about me. Mm. Yeah? Dalai Lama was his mother. Hmm. That his her love, her compassion sustained him. You want me to throw all the glory of this and say there is just a luminous quantum field doing its thing. So um, I felt like there were so many traps in the spiritual journey I could have fallen into. This domain or that domain, this teaching or that teaching, I couldn't rest in my soul. I never trusted any teaching. I never trusted any teacher. Even though I was receiving the revelation day after day, one equality and one issue and all, all of those things, I never trusted it because I remember when Christ after 40 days and 40 nights in the desert fasting, the devil showed up to him, you know, and he was in utmost vulnerability, you know, he could believe anything at that time. And the devil showed him all the kingdoms. And he said, they are yours if you follow me. And he said to him, no way. What the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. This saying was resonating in my heart all the time, you know. Nothing can tempt me. The absolute was wonderful, but was not enough. The point of light was wonderful, but not enough. Psychology was wonderful, but not enough. Ego, body, uh, so much. Something in my soul felt, I could, I could be uh, enamored by this. I could be, it's really magnificent, it's really wonderful. And I see one person, one teacher, one guru, becoming one fanatic about this or about that, you know? And I became afraid. I was afraid. I was a young kid in the neighborhood. I was afraid. So yes, I, I, I received the gift, but I didn't trust where it was going to take me. 
would my beast, would my, would my devil, would my ego tempt me, mislead me? And then I miss the point. But what is the point? I didn't know. I really didn't know. As the teaching unfolded, then this, this realization and that the teaching is about restoring the natural order of reality. We are created in the best forms, including that this form is also upgradable. Yeah. The human body can be upgraded, the soul can mature and develop and be enlightened, the essential domain can be really upgraded and added to it, richness and knowledges and decoded and added add the new codes, which we'll talk about later, a bit about the fundamental codes in existence. You know? When I saw this, I felt now I am, I am being restored slowly to being a human being, to being normal, to being the natural order. Little by little now I trust it. Little by little I trust the teaching uh, that really is about making the right right. And when we make the right right, then we can make the wrong right. We can fix the off things. But first, let's be human. Let's gain our humanness. Let's gain, uh, let's gain our kingdom that we live in. Let's be the guardian of this planet. Let's listen to the trees, to the water, to the air, to the mountains, to the birds, to the animals. Let's become human the caretaker of this, of this, and the creator of this kingdom. And we need, um, we need the things that we lost that enables us to be human again. And that's the essence. We lost our essence. And then when I realized that the essential teaching is about bringing that so we can be human, I could say, okay, otherwise, I could see the human, the, the essential domain can also be another trip. People can be intoxicated by the absolute or wine of essence or the diamond of essence or the golden of essence. It, you, you name it, you know. You can be uh, a love freak. You can be a conscious freak. You can be a mahakala freak, you know. You can be anything. You know? But this is the glory of the human being. I can be all and none. All of that, you know. So that's, that's about this uh, natural order. And that's why I decided also to, you know, uh, to do those videos, which I am so grateful to you because I was dreaming of, of them, but don't know how to do them. And you stepped in and you carried me in all the levels, energetically, lovingly, technically, inspirationally, preparingly, in all the levels for it to come. And we've done now so much. So now if I go, the teaching is preserved. And one reason I felt to have this teaching coded in, in this thing is because, as I said, my health and my age, I was afraid to go. And I knew I wouldn't write books, so this is at least documented. You know? I was more afraid that you would go. <laughs> yes, I was very close. I was really teetering, you know. And somehow now, it, it, I'm granted, I don't know how long, but now I feel relief because I put the major things that mm -hmm. I know, you know. And maybe tonight we put a little bit more. Uh, but the, another reason was is that when when we were unfolding the diamond approach in the late uh, 70s, you know, Almas, and we were uh, seeing that the unfoldment of essence and the psychological issues that brings up that every quality of essence that we have and we lost is covered by certain amount of issues, you know, Psychological misunderstanding, emotional hurt, lostness, um, you, you name it. You know? so the light is too bright. Yeah, the light is too bright. So many things that when, when the quality comes up, those issues come up. So it's, it's not just uh, transmitting essence and uh, giving the qualities and the knowledge and the enlightenment is taking the responsibility for the result. You know? 
if I, I remember at, at one time in the early times, we were so excited because our students in the private sessions or in the groups, they were getting essence. We were getting it and they were getting it and we were so excited and we really wanted them to, you know, to, to get it as fast as they can. Get your gold, get your red essence, get your, and the, the students, they will get it but for two weeks, they will be hitting the roof. Every issue in the book will come up, you know? And our, our enthusiasm for them and our keen and love and wanting to give them essence was coming from wrong, com wrong place of compassion, not mature compassion. Mature compassion means to know that it's gonna bring up issues for them. And they need to be held through this transition. They need to be cared for, they need to be processed, all of those things. So we decided at that time not to reveal the teachings, not to mention it, but to keep it just for a private session and the student in order for it not to be diluted, not to be messed, messed up with. And because we didn't know the extent to it, where it was gonna go. And also because we didn't want the student to uh, go into one hole, one issue, one complex after another without being protected. So if we just write it in books or reveal it, then people read it and it might activate them, but they don't know how to follow the process. They don't know how to follow the inquiry. But after some time, more and more knowledge is being revealed and put out in the field, and Alma started writing books. We took the commitment at that time to say, let's not do it now. You know? But then he started writing so many books and on one hand, the books are incredible, are magnificent. They are, I think, a huge addition to the human, you know, richness in psychology and spirituality. What, what the brought other me to hand, the work? Sorry? It's what brought me to the work. It's what brought you to the work and brought many to the work. On the other hand, very few can read those books, including me. I, I was with them developing those teachings. But when I read the books, I get clobbered. The level of intellect, the level of knowledge, the level of sophistication. The, I need to have a few PhDs to understand what's going on. Yes, so yeah. I had many students, including myself, complaining about that as if this knowledge that's being revealed in this book is like an obstacle to even know what, what are we talking about. When we talk about the pearl, what are we talking about? When are we talking about the diamond body or a diamond cruiser, space cruiser? What are we talking about? You know? So in, in terms of the psychological and spiritual knowledge, it's awesome. Each book is, like, is worth a PhD. In terms of the essential domain, it was a trickle down economics, trickle down essence. You learn very little about essence and you learn so much about it. Unless you are very intelligent and you are in the work and you've done the evolution, that magnificent. In fact, many, many of the students that I have, after doing the work with me for years and getting the qualities, they go and read the books and they say, now we can understand it. <laughs> yeah. you know? It's much easier. So I felt at that time, you know, uh, I, I don't want to read it. I don't, I don't want to write about it. But now that, that I see that the, the rabbit is out of the hat, mm. you know, I thought, let me reveal it. Let me talk as much as I know with the, my limitation and my abundance and the glory that I have and the limitations that I have about what I know, what I see. You know? Not only about essence that we discovered when we were in the diamond approach, but also when I cultivated and guided to develop the diamond logos teaching and the new domains that added to it to, to enhance the field and also when this grand vision landed, that the quest of the work is to make the right right. It's not the glory of knowledge, it's not the glory of new system, that's fine. But we need to humanize spirituality. Spirituality is, is needed for humanity, but also uh, spirituality need to be humanized. Humanity need to be spiritualized, but also spirituality need to be humanized. I hope I am documenting that, doing this in these talks, in these visions, and in this, in this like tonight, to bring the grand vision of the kingdom we live in, who we are. I mentioned it before, I'll mention it again. And that the aim of all of this 
is restoring us back to our normalcy, not just through nature. Because the absolute says, yes, you go to your true nature. Yeah, I need my true nature. I need my true body. I need my true soul. I need my true psyche. I need everything that's through me, the real me. So uh, it's, it's about restoring us to our humanness and seeing the glory, the glory of the human being, the glory of the kingdom we live in. And hopefully that will modify spirituality tame the bull a little bit, modify psychology to weave it, bring a new psychology. You know, that there, there's a new psychology need to be developed, you know, which is starting from essence to personality development, not from personality and doing personality to essential integration. You know? I think I mentioned like there are so many who, who are in essence, but non-functional, like a borderline, you know, borderlines, they are in their point of light. They are so clever, so intelligent. They are in their soul. They know if their therapist is faking it or real, you know? <laughs> and if you fake it, you get the brunt of it. Because, right. you know, yeah. they get you, they get me, you know? But if I know I am in, with their point of light, then I tell them I bullshit sometimes. I am off sometimes, you know? <laughs> but I know they are precious being. And that we need to help this being cultivate skillful means to function in this realm, to make it easy on itself. Then their point of light doesn't fight me. Their point of light begin to cooperate with me, to utilize the, the mind, the body, the psyche, the psyche to build a healthy personality. This is a whole field from essence to psychology that has not been um, uh, developed enough. No, it's, I, it's, it's, it, it operates the, the exact opposite. Opposite. Right? Yeah. We, we, we build a healthy ego self to, to get to a place where you can actually talk about spirituality. Yes. Yes. So there is so much that, that opening that's, you know, to, to ha happen. But beyond all of that is that, can we be human again? Can we know what the human again is before we come with a new theory of how the universe should be and everyone should be sitting in the Himalayan mountaintop and become a Gabuda, you know? It's, it's, it's not like that. It's, it's, it's not like that at all. So that's why about the Noor and the Noor Academy and the orientation that I feel rested in my heart and my soul that the teaching is to restore us back to our human our normalcy. This is a tall order. I don't think there is a limit to what the human being can reach. I am the alpha and the omega. I am the way. I am the light. I am the truth. Give me a few lifetimes to catch up. <laughs> but I know there is something glorious mm. waiting. You see? I'm grateful I hear somebody says, look how much there is. You know, and instead, I am the absolute sitting and the absolute doing its thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me a stick. <laughs> Thank you, Crazy.